Welcome to WeConnect. Thank you very much for joining us on this program. My guest today is from South Africa, that land of endless sunshine and, of course, cricket. Elizabeth Tabete is the Deputy Minister for Trade and Industry. She's here in our country on a short visit, but it's not her first visit. She's been here fairly often, and it's our pleasure to have her on our program today. Thank you so much for joining me here. Um, I know you come here very often, so uh, how is it going forward when you, when you look at India? Well, thanks for the invitation, for the interview. Uh, India and South Africa share a very common interest. Mm -hmm. And India, it's been called as the country of uh, prosperity as well, as well as an incredible India. So in that, I think we see a lot that we can uh, work together with India, particularly in terms of the question of dealing with poverty and unemployment, and also the small medium enterprises. There's a lot that we can learn as South Africa because India has been doing it for quite some time, and they are much more knowledgeable, and the support system, of course, right. of the institutions that you have here, quite, quite good to make sure that they can give the support. Right. Uh, of course, uh, small businesses are one of the areas of your speciality, really, when I was reading up about you. Uh, so do you believe that the future, the economic future of a country possibly lies in developing small businesses? Yes, of course, because it has been proven, I think, in many successes countries, I mean, that I've, 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 I've seen or read about, small business seem to be the bedrock of the economy. India here, I mean, proves to be one such country. China, mm. South Korea, etc., all of them, I mean, the economies were supported heavily right. by the small medium enterprises because they were able to create jobs in a much more sustainable way. Also using the cottage industry, which I think yes. some of the um, businesses here in India are family run, straight from home. Women can be able to, especially self-help groups of women. And you know in South Africa, you've got 52% women. Yes. And the unemployment rate for, from the women is quite high as well as the youth unemployment, hence then, we come here and learn best practice and see how best can we localize that back home so that it can work. If it can work in India, it means it, it can work in South Africa. Right. Um, of course, uh, women and the enhancement and the empowerment of women is also something that's dear to your heart. Yes, for sure. Uh, that's one aspect that I champion based on my allocation of duties. As you know, we assist Dr. Rob Davis to run that huge department, massive department of trade industry in South Africa. Yes. Hence, I mean, uh, we are having two deputy ministers to assist one minister. Um, because I do have a strong belief that once we empower women, we empower the nation. Women, by nature, I mean, it is uh, people who care. It is people who nurture life in any way. Without women, there'll be no life that's true. in this whole I world and that, planet. Yes, yes, right. So women play a key critical role in that. Mm -hmm. But also women can, I mean, are able, it has been proven, that uh, women uh, household, um, if you look at that, they are, they are those families that are headed by women, family, uh, and they're doing well under women. Um, so it tells you that Women are also the bedrock of, of, of most of our family uh, tree, but they are also making sure that they can together make sure that this can work. Yeah. For women all over the show are strong, resilient. True. And I mean, when you look at the face of poverty, unfortunately, you see a woman first. True. There are males who are, you know, also poverty stricken, but it affects mostly women mm -hmm. and you know in most country systems like the migrant system we had in South Africa left a lot of women then staying in those rural areas where the facilities are not like in the you know urban areas and uh, their husbands were, 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 were then subjected to the mining industry where mm -hmm. they have to stay there mm -hmm. and you know come home once a year some once after five years and the woman would be there looking after kids, making sure that, you know, the house fires are burning, etc. Right. Um, now, you look after trade and industry. Now, I was wanting to ask, in your own country, uh, and since you also concentrate on women a lot, one can see that, uh, do you find that you have to encourage women 
uh, a great deal to actually come out and start a little small business or a cottage industry. Do you find that they need to be nurtured in that direction? Oh yes, of course. Uh, based on our historical background, unfortunately, as you know, the apartheid system, I mean, if you were black, you were, you were treated otherwise, you've got Kalapa and all that. But if you're a woman, you, were, you had this triple oppression. True. For the mere fact that you're a black person and secondly, for you as a woman. But what is ironic is that even white women were segregated against because of the mere fact of being women. Right. Mm. Up until 1993 in South Africa, women were minors. If you're a minor, it means like you're the firstborn of your husband because you must consult with him to have higher purchase agreements signed by him. Women were not having any right to open businesses. We had to encourage them to do so under difficult conditions. But at least today, after 18 years of our democracy, we see quite, I mean, massive change. Women are able to be, uh, we are all equal before the law now. Right. And um, surely women, if you look at how women have progressed, they are doing so well. Mm. But also, given a chance, women can be best, better, 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 better economist. Yes. Women I can agree. <laughs> I like that. I like that very much. Because yes. they deal with womenomics. Yes. Right. Because women are, are then have to deal with the economy looking at it with the side of a woman and making sure that they are able then to make, you know, with little. They can do and try a bit to deal with whatever is needed, kids to school, survivalist if they're selling, but they're at the lower level of the economy, unfortunately. Right. But we managed through that, and um, the, the issue was that women had to fight in South Africa to be where they are today. Right. It was not easy, but the ruling party, as we speak now, the African National Congress, which is the ruling party, yes. I mean, made that provision very clear that women were there during the struggle, they, they fought the, the, the course of the struggle side by side. So when the future is decided, they must be there. But women themselves had to make sure that they fight for that. Constitution making, women had to say, we are also here. We must be part of the constitution making process. We are here. Negotiations put us in the negotiation process until now. So we are grateful for our party to adopt a 50-50 approach that women must be given a chance. That's why if you, if you look at our cabinet, I mean, we are doing quite well with ministers holding key positions. Science and technology is one. Important. Uh, energy is one. Important portfolios. Exactly. Very important portfolios. Water environment is a woman. And look at those before. It, it, those were not for women. But today they are. Deputy ministers look at trade and industry. It's one of the I key. sitting here. <laughs> Tourism. Yes. Woman. Deputy minister who's around here in any way, and, and quite, quite a lot of the defense ministry, woman. Right. Which is a quite key, you know, portfolio. Right. Madam Tabati, I'm going to ask you to hang on for just a little while. We'll take a very short break, but when I come back, I'm going to ask you how the men are handling all these amazing changes in South Africa. Don't go away. We'll be away for a very short while. Be back and join you. Let the smell enchant you. Before the menu, let its history mesmerize you. If you are crazy about food, let the madness entertain you. Feeding Frenzy, Sunday at 3.30 p.m. Only on NDTV Hindu. Welcome back to our program. Thank you for joining us once again. Madam Elizabeth Tabate is the Deputy Minister for Trade and Industry in South Africa, and she's here joining me, which is a very interesting discussion developing here. I want to ask you, of course, right now, how are the men handling all these changes? Well, with, with, the, with our democracy, I mean now, maturing gradually, uh, 18 years, um, we still uh, see Patrick in South Africa, but most of the men, I think they've accepted the, the question of women at 50-50 level. 
and they are able at least to embrace women and acknowledge what women are doing. So really they have no choice. They have not really not been at given all. A choice. Not at all because women in South Africa the only were way. keen to make sure that they are part of the changes. Mm. And also as we deal with the new dispensation, they were there. I mean, currently, if you look at the numbers of the women ministers, I mean, it's surely over 40 percent, mm. 45 percent or so. Deputy ministers, the same. But also, we've got key portfolios in provinces. Though we, we, we're not a federal structure, we are a unitary structure, sovereign, but you've got the, the provinces where we have, like your people, they call them governors. We call them premiers right. within the provinces. Mm -hmm. Out of those, you know, it's very interesting that the picture has changed, especially after 2009 elections. Right. We used to have, uh, you know, uh, not equal numbers, but today we've got more women who are premiers. I think there are around five, if I'm not mistaken, that are those provinces that are led by women, either four or five. You know, it's, it's really a great pleasure to actually sit here and talk with you about something that I believe is so vital to all of us as women. Let me not make this into a gender sort of interview, but I would like to ask you now about your portfolio in terms of trade and industry. You've been coming in and out of India for a fair number of times. And um, what is this special? I mean, I know that you did say that you're looking at improved relationships between these two countries, but uh, what is it specifically in terms of trade and industry that you wish to see happen between South Africa and India? Uh, my mission to, I mean, I've been in India from 2005 yes. to date uh, with different activities, um, leading small business people here. Our main aim for this investment um, trade initiative mm. is to make sure that we can see lots of investment increasing of companies who can invest uh, here from home uh, uh, within the different sectors that India is having. Also the same, Indian companies going to invest okay. in South Africa. Both ways. So that we can reach our target. Remember, we've set ourselves targets before. Mm. And what is good and nice is that we were able to surpass those targets. Really? We started long before 10, 12 uh, billion per whatever. Then now our target, 15 billion by 2014. Right. Which we want to achieve between the two countries. Then it means we must accelerate right. business relations. We must then be able to do things differently and make sure that we, we can achieve that target. It right. is achievable. I was just wondering, is there any specific uh, area in, in trade and industry that you yourself are looking at in India? Well, in India, you talk about the, the state where we are. Yes. Uh, it is a state that deals more with the auto industry. Yes, of course as well as other products. Mm. And to us, the auto industry is one of those priority sectors that we have identified in terms of our new growth path, I'm mm -hmm. sure you're familiar with. Yes. Um, and we believe then that out of that, there's so much that we can then get out of the auto industry here mm -hmm. in Chennai, mm -hmm. in Tanil Laidu State, and we can then take that and make sure that we can be able to make sure that we harmonize we, 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 we change, uh, we, we, we transfer skills, and also we look at the other sectors that India possess. ICT right. is one of those skills, as you know. Yes. India, I mean... Excelling in that, yes. Excelling on that, and right. within the good relationship, I believe we can be able to take it from here and uh, be able to do the same, because we have taken ICT as one of the key critical sectors that are one of the job drivers. Right. What we mean by job drivers, it is those sectors that will be able uh, to make us see, realize the, the, the target that our president has set for us, that we must create 5 million jobs by 2020. Can you do that? President Zuma said so last year. Can you, can you actually achieve that, do you think? Well, it, it can be achievable depending on what form of, of uh, programs you put in place. Mm -hmm. what form of trade relations we have and so India is a partner that we believe we can get so much out of them because they've, I mean, they've traveled this path quite a long way and supporting the emissions of the small business very, very strongly and make sure that then we can be able to, it is achievable only if you can be able to employ different strategies, different programs, but making sure then you work with other countries the same as it and surely within the IPSA agreement and the BRICS 
agreement, mm -hmm. we are able then to have much more relationship with those countries, yes. but also make sure that then we can deal with this particular issue of creating more jobs that are sustainable, and then get in the partnership because government alone cannot, I mean, succeed. Absolutely. We need business to also come to the picture because we create conditions to be conducive yes. for business to, uh, I mean, to do business. And then they are able then, that's why today then we are so happy to have uh, the chamber, South Chamber, yes. supporting us and being partnered to this um, international uh, incentive trade initiative and we're able then to take it further with our uh, chambers to take this forward. Right. What about the other way around now? You were talking about like you come here and, um, you know, looking at the auto industry. Now, I was just wondering in a reverse direction, is it working, say, South Africa, in terms of India, South Africa, uh, South African business coming into India? Tell me about the reverse direction then. Well, it is working because for us, we have a mutual agreement and based on a win-win situation. And we are trying then to make sure that the trade balance doesn't exist. Mm. And then we try to support each other. But uh, South Africa is a country. I mean, we, ex we import a lot of medication from here because it is what India is strong of and dealing with. Yes. So in that space, then we are saying they can come even much more to build other pharmaceutical industries in the country. You know now we've got a challenge of the HIV and AIDS. We yes. believe that we need then to have Very much. some of those um, plants to be set up to deal with the antiretrovirals so mm -hmm. that we can have them there, not importing them from time to time. Mm -hmm. With a good relationship we have, those things can be possible then to be done within uh, some time after we negotiated quite good uh, incentive that we have in the country that they can see that they can be able to do this. ICT can be one of those that we can be able to work together, dealing with our broadband and others. Surely we can then achieve this because we believe in a two-way process, not only one-sided. Right. That's why I was asking because in terms of the two-way process, do you, for instance, um, look, um, you know, um, in, a, in a very important manner at, for instance, I mean, some of the wonderful things that South Africa has to offer the world and I mean, I, I'm talking about South African diamonds, I'm talking about South African wines, and so there are so many things that South Africa has to offer. So do you see a lot of that happening between South Africa and India? You no, know, no, yes, there is a, a good, there are good prospects that those things will then follow. Mm -hmm. Because we believe that there's so much that, that uh, um, the country can get, India can get out of us in South Africa. As we just correctly said, yes. wine is some of those things. We produce good wine I in know. South Africa mm -hmm. good, that yes. everywhere in the world people taste and say, hmm, I want to have more. Yes. So surely India can get more wines from, from us. But now during breakfast we were eating and there was jam on the table. Mm. One of our officials noticed that the jam come from France, mm. not from South Africa. No. <laughs> so maybe and then we're saying one other wine. possibility. It yes. means we can then supply India with gem with yes. because you know that we are a tropical country to some extent. Yes. We produce very good gem mm. in different uh, type uh, with different types of taste, and so these are just issues that are day-to-day -day issues, right. basic issues that we can be able to uh, to improve on. That is a good start that I was just telling as an example. Yes, that was right, just today. Yes, absolutely. Time for us to take another very short break. But we'll be right back here with you on WeConnect. So please don't go anywhere. Madam, 
Madam Elizabeth Tabate is my guest here on We Connect today. She's Deputy Minister for Trade and Industry in the Republic of South Africa. And I really enjoy what she's been saying to me about her own country, where it's at, the status of women. So I'm glad that you could join us once again on this program. Thank you very much again for staying with us. Uh, let me talk now about this very important area of skills transfers because uh, India has been quite a big in that. It's a big player. Um, is this a direction for South Africa to be going along with India? Yes, of course, because I think five of the priorities of government for the STEM up until 2014 is talking to education. Within education, we talk about skills and scar skills in any way that the world over we, you know we've got a problem in terms of the engineering sector, we've got a problem in terms of the science, uh, technology, etc., and all those things, and India is good in all those things. So definitely, we are looking at signing very good MOUs to make sure that this can happen, and we let our, our, our people to come and train here, because India possesses a lot of, I mean, excellence uh, uh, schools here that are really spearheading this issue right. making sure as you know you produce many phds than us absolutely you've got many institutions mm -hmm. more than us so we believe that this will be taken forward because skills transfer is one of the key issues that we believe that we'll talk to the SCAR skills and make sure that we can leverage on that right now uh, when you come on a on a you know delegation and meetings uh, like like you are on this trip do you find that from the Indian point of view, there's an enthusiasm to work with your country. Yes, of course, because working with the chambers here, we are able to see business people coming. This morning we opened um, the, 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 the investment uh, trade initiative and surely there, was a, 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 there were a number of business people who were keen to come and listen to what we have to offer and as we, we are busy with this interview, they are going on with the B2B meeting, matchmaking, to make sure that they can then implement what we're talking about. Mm. Surely, coming here with a delegation of uh, plus minus 54 companies, mm. majority of them being those that are matching and uh, small, medium enterprises, and also from this side, it is matching to them from the different sectors. Agro-processing is one of the mining, um, you know, it's quite a variety of those uh, sectors that we believe they are going to see something out of this uh, um, ITI and they'll be able then to take it forward. And tomorrow I'll be visiting some of the industries in a way of trying to make sure that where can we then try mm. to implement this part of good agreement going forward and strengthen that partnership. Right. Now you just said that you are here with 54 uh, companies being represented. That is a very big delegation. Mm -hmm. uh, did you need such a big one? Yes, we need such a delegation because, as I indicated, we mm. come, we we we've got with us more than six sectors, okay, including aviation and others, because we believe these are critical job drivers as per our national uh, a, a new growth path, and we believe that we must get these companies here so that they can deliberate for the two days, and surely after that we must see progress. And some of them might clinch deals, and then they'll be able then to go back home and then be able then to end up exporting because most of them would like them to be export um, ready. Hence, they come here, they look for those opportunities, vice versa also. Yes. Your people yes. come to South Africa and be able to niche the opportunities. We are then strengthening the two relations and working towards a common goal. Right. But uh, ma'am, when, when you look at uh, all the business delegations and the people representatives from different companies who are actually meeting, is there one particular area, you did talk about the auto industry as Chennai is the auto capital of our country. Uh, is there any other specific uh, area of uh, business, you know, that uh, you, you think is going in that particularly good direction? Well, if you take India, not only here yes. uh, in Chennai, right. look at Kerala. Yes. You've got a rubber industry that is very, 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 very uh, promising to be job creator here for many people. And what we like mostly is that most of the Indian business people beneficiate that rubber, not export it raw as it is. Mm. Uh, I think Indeed. producing tires, That's like right. here you've got the auto industry. Absolutely. There's a link then with Kerala, yes. with, with, the, with that rubber industry and making sure that we can provide more tires. And it's good because they're able, beneficiation is one of the of, of the policy that we want to implement fully in South Africa. 
Right. Hence, then we come and learn about these issues. So I believe. Look at um, also coconut. Coconut. We visited your your institute that is that is dealing yes. with coconut, right? Mm -hmm. Look at the value chain. You cover the value chain very well from planting that, growing, coming, cutting it, doing all sorts of products that the market need. In fact. You are supplying most of our big chain stores You're right. that, that are selling some of your good meat made out of coconut. So True. surely we are saying there's so much that we can look at our tropical land and see whether can't we get uh, to start this because there's quite a huge demand mm -hmm. and we can be able then to get the skill to be transferred technology wise. We already have, you know, some agreement and we're working on that so that we can practicalize what we're talking about, not only theorize. Right. No conversation about South Africa can go without, of course, cricket and tourism. So let me, I mean, you know, South Africa is just such a fantastic destination for tourism. Is this something also that you are probably trying to uh, actually promote on these kind of trips of yours? Yes, we do, because we try to make sure that tourism is one of those sectors that we identified. Yes is going to be also job drivers. It's big. And it's big, it's, big. it's huge, and especially after hosting 2010 World Cup. That's right. Many people now do know what South Africa is all about. They were looking at it through internet some, they were looking at it through maps, but now they've been in South Africa, and most of them actually, from 2010, 2011, made reservations at that particular time because it That's was the first time and I said, wow, this is a beautiful country yeah. with nine provinces with so many possibilities. And some of them are flocking back and we want to see more because one tourist create plus minus eight jobs within the value chain. That, that's right, and, absolutely. And, and, and that's a lot to talk to job creation. That's a lot then to say this is an industry that we must try to strengthen and dwell more on it and move on with the tourism. Right. But we are happy our tourism numbers has grown, uh, has gone up and we want to see more. Right. And also the Indian community, we are encouraging you, them to come yeah. to South Africa to have a good holiday. Right, of Good course. weather, of course. Of course, well. absolutely. That's what I started by saying, wonderful sunshine. Yes. A beautiful country. Yes. And cricket, well, who could ask for more? <laughs> <laughs> we try and, our level best. Our and, cricket team, we are right. behind them. They bring us proud. And you hope that... But, but you know as huh? well, India, you've got champions. Yes, of course. Our but team does us proud too, now and then. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's been my distinct pleasure to be able to have you on my show tonight. I'm extremely grateful to you. Thank you very much for Thank your you. time. I appreciate Thank you so that much. very much. Well, that's all we have time for here on WeConnect. And I do hope that you've enjoyed listening to us because I think this has been a truly fascinating interview. One of those very special ones here on WeConnect. And so until we meet again, you take care. Bye for now.